Hello and welcome to this video. In today's video, it's going to be all about how to create your own trading algorithm or your own trading strategy. It's about going from having an idea to programming it and I'm going to show you exactly how to program it. I'll be using multi-charts that uses power language, very similar to TradeStation uh, and Easy Language. And we're going to go from having an idea of a strategy and first of all, I'm going to write it out in plain English on the board, write out what the idea is, then we move over to the computer and I'll program it. Once it's programmed, then what we can do is we can backtest it. Now what backtesting is, is we can run the strategy using the signals over past data. This is going to be a strategy for Forex, although it will work on other markets. The idea of this video is taking the bare bones of an idea of a strategy, programming it, and getting it up and working so I can show you guys how to do it within multi-charts. Now I've been working with a client of mine and it's his idea but for privacy for my client's sake I'm not giving away his strategy in fact I don't actually know his strategy yet I've just worked with him to get the bare bones together and then he'll take it away using my different techniques, he'll modify it, add filters, that sort of thing and hopefully create something good I don't know whether it's going to work or not from now. The idea is purely have an idea, trading rules in plain English, get them on the computer, get them into code and see how they've worked. So it's a basic strategy and works. We're going to be testing different time frames. We're going to be testing different Forex pairs with it. And it's just a few rules. So I've just literally just given this a quick name, Bollinger Band Touch. Now, the first thing we want to put on this strategy is like a regime filter. So we want a filter to only go long in certain conditions, only go short in certain conditions. And that condition is something that's widely popularized. Uh, it's a 200 moving average, uh, an exponential moving average. So the first thing we want to look at is um, if, we, if we buy, then we need to be above the 200 EMA and the opposite is to go short. So once we know we're above, let's say we're looking for buys, once we know we're above the 200 EMA, then what we want to do is we're looking at Bollinger Bands. If you don't know what Bollinger Bands are, then I encourage you to apply them to your chart. All charts in software packages have Bollinger Bands. and they're made up of three bands. You've got center line or moving average, and then you've got the upper band and the lower band. And we're using the upper band and that lower band. For a buy setup, so we're looking for buys above the 200 EMA. Once we're above the 200 EMA, the buy signal is buy when the price touches the, the lower Bollinger Band. Simple as that, an opposite for short. So if we're looking for short trades, we'd want to be below the 200 EMA, so we're in a, a bearish condition, and then we want to short when it touches the upper Bollinger Band. Okay, so we're looking for a bit of a, an overextension, and we're looking for a trade to revert to the mean. So exit strategies. This will be like a stop and reverse type strategy. That's what I call it. So we could have no other exits and it could just be always in the market. So we're buying and then to get out of that long trade or that buy trade, we sell short and get into the short sell trade and vice versa. So we're always in the market. However, we will be applying a stop loss as well. So there will be occasions where we will be flat on, flat on the trade. But we do want to actually test another exit strategy. And it's a simple one and simple often works best with algorithmic trading strategies and all it is is literally counting the number of bars you're in the trade since you've entered. So we call it bars, we'll call it bars in trade but we'll see what that's, see how that works out with the software. Um, so I've mentioned that we're going to be testing different time frames. So if we're entering on 30 minute time frame and we want to be 
exiting the trade after five bars. It's literally it's five 30 minute bars. We could be testing out the daily chart and we want to be exiting after three bars. So that'd be exiting after three days. Okay, so quite simple. Let's now go over to the computer where I'll program it and you can see exactly how it's done. Then we can apply it to the chart. And as I've already mentioned, this Bollinger Band touch strategy, I've no idea whether it's going to work yet because I haven't tested it. My client's got different ideas for it. He's going to go out and do the testing. I'm just helping him get the basic code together. But, however, if you are looking for a strategy that does work, I've done a previous video which, if you stay to the end of this video, I'll show you where to get the link for that. And it's a strategy that you can go out and use straight away. And I'll show you exactly how to program it, exactly how it works, and I'll show you the back test. And it's really pretty good. So hang around and I'll show you where to get that all for free. So now I'm in multi charts and we're in the power language editor, which is the bit where we write the code, we do the programming. And I'm going to go through it step by step. So hopefully you can see how we how we do these things, how we get these strategies in the computer ready for testing or for even trading automatically. Because once this is programmed and we can back test, decide whether we want to trade it or not, modify it. Uh, once we're happy, then we can switch on the computer and let it take the trades for us. It's just another beauty of our rhythmic trading. So let's start then, and always start. I always start with the inputs. So the inputs are things that we can change later on, things that we can test, things that we can optimize. So for this strategy, we're going to test uh, one of the exits, which was how many bars after we enter the trade we want to exit. So I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it BSE, or that stands for Bars Syntax, the entry. Okay. Um, so that's our first input. And the next input that we're going to want to test is just a stop loss. We're going to use a simple fixed pip stop loss on this strategy. They're ones that work particularly well with algorithms. Like I said, a lot of the times the simple stuff does work the best. It's certainly the most robust and it's going to carry on working well in the future. So we're going to call this input stop loss. Oh. And I've assigned them both as zero for now, but we're going to be changing those later on. The next thing, we want to look at the Bollinger Bands. And I'm going to assign a variable to uh, the upper band of the Bollinger Band and the lower Bollinger Band, or the lower band of the Bollinger Band. So let's do those now. Call it upper band and lower band. Now, we need to tell multicharts, tell the computer what these variables are, what they actually mean. So, first of all, I'll say the upper band equals Bollinger Band. And we're going to be using the standard, we're going to be using the closing price and the standard 20. And this is going to be the upper band uh, plus two standard deviations. Lower band is going to be the opposite of that, so we're going to be Bollinger Band, still going to use the close, 20, but we're going to be looking at minus two. So that's told us what the Bollinger Bands are. And we've got our inputs. Now, if you remember, our rule were we only want to buy when we're above the 200 exponential moving average, and we only want to sell short when we're below the exponential moving average, the 200 period. So, what we say is if the close of, let's say, the last bar, so the previous bar, which that's using that one, that denotes the, the previous bar. If that is above X average. Now, something I should mention here, 
see this x average that is a built-in function with multi-charts or what i mean is multi-charts have already put in the calculation for an exponential moving average so it allows us just to call up x average and ever so simple it's you might notice the same with bollinger band um, it's a built-in function as you can see i'm hovering over it now it says a built-in function it's something that multi-charts has already programmed in this is why multi-charts is really really quick and powerful to when you're building strategies like this so if the close of the last bar is above the exponential moving average and we need to say it's the close and a 200 period then buy next bar at where we say we want to buy we want to buy at the lower band the lower bollinger band so we put in lower band and the type of order is going to be a limit order because it's going to be a better price than what the current price is if we were buying and the price was above the current price, then we'd use a stop order. And now I want to do the opposite for the shorts. So if the close of the last bar is less than the X, uh, exponential moving average, 200 period, then sell short next bar at upper band limit. Now, multi-charts has got its own um, kind of checks your strategy as you go along. Now, once you've programmed a strategy, you can what's called compile it. So if I click on the compile and it says down the bottom here, it's compiled successfully. That means there's no errors. If there was errors, then it would show up. So there are entries. Now, that's a strategy in itself because, like I said, it's going to be a stop and reverse strategy. We're always going to be in the market until we put in our next exit order, which is the, the bar since entry or the BSE. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, if BSE, and this is our input that we can tell multi-charts exactly what we want it to be, if it's greater than zero, so what this is doing is if I've got BSE set to zero, then it's going to ignore uh, this bar since entry exit and it's just going to do the above stop and reverse type exit. So if it's above zero, it's always going to be above zero because we want to use this, this bars, um, bar since entry type exit. So if it's above zero and Bars since entry. Now, you see how this has come up in multicharts. This is, again, it's because it's a built-in function. Multicharts knows how to do this. So, so we can use, if the bar since entry is above zero and the bar since entry is greater than or equal to BSE, which is what we tell multicharts we want it to be, or we can run an optimization to see what the best one is, then begin. So we can now start this part of the code or start this this end, this exit signal. Quite simply, sell next bar at market. So if we were in a long trade then and the bar since entry are greater than or equal to BSE, which is what we've said, we could have put in one there, we could have put in 10 there, we could have put in 14 there, um, then sell next bar at market, we're going to exit. And we're also going to buy to cover next bar at market. That's our exit if we're short. And then we put an end there because we've said then begin and it's got to finish with an end. Now we can check that hitting the compile button and it's compiled successfully. So we've got no errors there. That's great. And that's it. Last thing we got is the stop loss. So that's quite easy. Again, this is a multi charts function. Um, I'll put in set stop contract. And again, like we've used BSE above zero, means we've got an option to use it or not. Same with the stop loss. So I'm going to say 
if stop loss, which is our input, if you remember, this is what we tell it to be. If it's above zero, so if we leave stop loss as zero, we're not using a stop at all. But if it's anything above zero, then it's going to work. So if the stop loss is above zero, then set stop loss and it's going to be the value of stop loss, which is our input. And let's compile it and it's compiled successfully. So that's it, that's it, it's done. So just to recap, inputs, these are things that we can change in the code or optimize with the software. Variables, that's given, that's telling us what the upper band and the lower band of the Bollinger Band is. If the close of the last bar is above the exponential moving average or 200 period moving average, then we can buy and we want to be buying at the lower Bollinger Band. If the close of the last bar is below the 200 period moving average, then we want to be selling short at the upper band. And if BSC, whatever we state it as, is above zero and bars since entry are greater than or equal to whatever we state it as, then begin and there's our exits and then set the stop loss. So let's go over to the chart. I've prepared this chart here. It's just a 60 minute chart of pound dollar and you can see the red and the blue lines at the upper and the lower Bollinger Band. Let's apply this strategy. So we go insert study, find our study, which is this one, apply it, and there we go. So that's, if we zoom out, these are our trades, and so you bought at the lower band there, and the only thing we haven't got actually is the exponential moving average. So let's put an exponential moving average on there. So insert study, an indicator, uh, moving average, exponential, inputs, length, 200. I'm going to have to we'll just change the color of that exponential moving average because it's red at the moment and that clashes with our lower Bollinger Band. So moving average uh, style, let's make it white so we can see. So we can see here uh, is a buy trade, let's just turn that off. Here's a buy trade bought at the lower band because the close of the previous bar was above this white line and then we're above. We don't sell short here at the upper Bollinger Band because we're above the 200 period moving average. However, the price comes down, we're below, so we're short there. So we can see that the strategy is working. The only thing we haven't done is switched on our bars since entry exit. So let's, all we do is we just this BSE. So let's say we want to use six bars. So after six bars, we can exit the trade. And there you go. Way more trades as you'd expect because I zoom in. Bought, wait six bars, exit. Next buy signal, wait six bars, exit. Short trade, wait six bars, exit. And it's that simple. Well, I hope you found that useful and not too overwhelming or too complicated. It's pretty straightforward once you get used to it. So the idea, again, the video, taking a simple idea and then we're gonna build on it, but simple idea, get it into multi-charts so we can back test it and improve it, see what it does on different markets, different time frames. Then once we've found something that works and we're quite happy with, then we can switch it on and we can trade it automatically. Like I said, I don't know how that strategy works. I haven't even tested it yet. But if you want a strategy that does work, and I'll show you exactly how to code that too, I'll link the video up somewhere. I'll also put it in the description down below. So I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, then please ask. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, because that always helps. And you can always email me, jared at thetransparenttrader.com. 
go over to the blog. Always loads of good stuff going on over there. So until the next one, this is Jared Goodwin, and thank you.